welcome to this class on uh, neuroscience of human movements. Uh, this is part 10 of our uh, discussion on cerebellum. So, in this class uh, we will be discussing uh, the possible role of uh, climbing fibers in uh, motor learning. For a long time since the 1950s and 60s probably the 70s, it was believed that the cerebellum might be involved in uh, the learning of motor skills. Independently Marr and uh, Albus uh, proposed these their theories and uh, these theories continue to dominate uh, the notion that uh, cerebellum forms an important part where motor skills might be learned. What is the basis behind this hypothesis? It turns out that uh, cerebellum has relatively regular structure unlike the cerebral cortex as we have discussed previously. So, there is a micro circuit that we have discussed and this micro circuit is repeated many many times. So, in the cerebellum. So, that means it becomes easier for people with modeling skills to model the activity of this. So, what they need to do is if they can model the activity of one micro circuit, then they have practically modeled the activity of entire cerebellum, they will have to repeat this multiple times. So, this gave rise to a movement or almost a, a large body of work uh, that involved modeling of cerebellar function that started out with the seminal work or the seminal contributions of Maran Albus, where they claimed that uh, motor learning is mediated by the cerebellum or at least error based motor learning. What is meant here is error correction. So, there are multiple roles for cerebellum, uh, let us list some of this one is uh, short term error correction this is short term or online error correction as soon as there is an error that has to be corrected. The other is long term error correction, this is also called as motor learning or you make a mistake and you realize uh, and you realize that that is a mistake for example, I wrote error correction I wrote make and then I corrected it right, but that is a short term error correction, but you make a mistake and then you realize that is a mistake and you keep correcting it over successive repetitions of the same movement, then you become more and more skilled at performing at least at least at that moment right. Later Masao Ito proposed that the climbing fiber input to the Purkinje neurons contains important information in the sense that it modifies the response of the Purkinje neuron to future mass fiber inputs and it does so for relatively prolonged period of time. This might be several minutes to several hours, prolonged period of time means the response of the mossy fibers or of specific mossy fibers. Let us remember there are there is a great divergence from the mossy fiber system to the parallel fiber system is it not. So, response to specific mossy fiber input is modified or is modulated by climbing fiber activity in that sense climbing fiber activity can be called as some form of teaching signal it teaches what is the correct way of doing things or what is at least the mistake what is the wrong way of doing this if maybe it does not teach how to do things but at least it teaches how not to do it so we will discuss the detail in this class so the climbing fiber input modulates the response of the Purkinje cells to massive fiber inputs for relatively long periods of time lasting from several minutes to several hours right. So, this is the idea propagated Masao Ito by Masao Ito and uh, this was well supported in several experimental studies later on. Let us see some of this. Okay. So, here you have um, a stimulation of uh, selective Purkinje uh, cells by simultaneous stimul stimulation of multiple parallel fibers and climbing fibers. When this is done and activity of Purkinje cells are measured what happens. So, this what 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 is done is selectively induced long term depression we will discuss what this is in a bit in the synapses between Purkinje neurons and parallel fibers that are activated concurrently with climbing fibers. So, what is meant here is the following. Let us consider two three cases suppose there is a case when uh, I am going to draw 
parallel fiber activity in red. So, red, red indicates parallel fiber activity or stimulation of parallel fibers and uh, blue indicates uh, climbing fiber uh, stimulation right. So, suppose there is a case where uh, the parallel fiber is stimulated here and then is stimulated there just the parallel fibers are stimulated, but not the climbing fibers right. So, this is uh, done. Then in in further trials in further trials I am activating the parallel fibers in approximately the same sequence, but in one case along with the activation of a climbing fiber. So, that is climbing fiber stimulation. Let us remember the let us remind ourselves of these two things. Climbing fiber stimulation provides relatively strong input to Purkinje cell activity. This we know from uh, previous discussions. Climbing fiber stimulation causes what are called as complex spikes due to protracted calcium conductance. This we have discussed in previous classes. So, due to this protracted calcium conductance, there is what is called as a complex spike activity that is observed in the Purkinje cells. Now, whenever climbing fibers are firing in tandem with parallel fibers, then what happens is the activity of these parallel fibers in future. So, and then you stimulate parallel fibers for example. What is the response of the Purkin J cells? That is what we need to discuss. What is the, uh, the response of the Purkin J cell? When there is paired activity of parallel fibers along with so paired means paired activity of parallel fiber and climbing fiber when the parallel fiber activity and climbing fiber activity is paired as in that case for example the response of the the purkinje neuron i'm going to draw it before training it was like this and after training I am going to draw in blue it is like this a depression in its activity right. So, this is after training red is before training ok. What will happen if uh, climbing fiber activity is not paired along with uh, the parallel fiber activity. Or in other words, if you have climbing fiber activity independent of uh, parallel fiber activity, what you will see is that, so there is activity, this is before training. And then I have a case where uh, there is parallel fiber activity and independent without any relation to the parallel fiber activity there is an independent climbing fiber activation. So, these two are not happening simultaneously separately then after training also you will see is very similar response. So, what does this tell us? This tells us that what is happening here is when climbing fiber activity accompanies parallel fiber activity it tells the system it tells the Purkinje cell that what has happened is a mistake reduce your activity that reduction is what you are seeing as this difference. This is a relatively long term depression of the synaptic strength between that parallel fiber and that Purkinje cell or in other words what these parallel fibers are telling you is wrong is the information that is given by the climbing fiber. So, the climbing fiber in this sense acts as a teaching signal the climbing fiber I am writing in code because this is uh, uh, an interesting hypothesis. So, the climbing fiber input therefore, acts as a teaching signal telling the Purkin J cell that the information from parallel fiber fibers whose activity accompanies its own activity or the climbing fibers own activity is wrong and their uh, activation or their uh, stimulation in future should be responded to with a lesser effect. So, the, to that extent that means whenever there is an error right 
parallel fibers activity that caused that error will not be responded to in future at least for the near future for the next few minutes to next few hours. So, that is in, in when this is repeated over several days when this is repeated over multiple iterations what happens is that this becomes uh, solidified in some sense this becomes uh, the trend that these parallel fiber activities will no longer cause that movement why because these movements are the ones that cause the error that has been taught to us earlier by the climbing fiber activity. So, what is what will be the activity of uh, the climbing fibers and parallel fibers in uh, learning for example, let us take one or two cases uh, suppose in accurate wrist movements suppose before training before an adaptation suppose that is the activity so, poor picture try to improve that ok not much improvement. Uh, suppose uh, that is the actual displacement trajectory and you see that uh, the activity of uh, Purkin J cells is this right. Something or uh, let me redraw that something and then there is close to the movement there is a lot of activity and then there is a different amount of activity after the movement right ok. In some cases this may be accompanied by climbing fiber activity marked in green for example, in some trials there is a climbing fiber activity or firing of a of a climbing fiber in some cases. This is in regular movements only in some cases this uh, climbing fiber activity will be there and in other cases this will not be there in other trials for example. there will be no climbing fiber activity this is trial 1 for example, and this is trial 2 ok. Suppose th you have to make these movements as adaptations. So, let me erase this uh, suppose there is an adaptation right suppose uh, there is a perturbation to which uh, there must be an adaptation. Right. So, that is the that is the displacement profile node there is a correction that is happening here. At this time what happens if we draw the climbing fiber activity sorry if we draw the the Purkin J cell activity you will find that there is as usual as you saw here there is going to be similar activity here. But what you also note that is that in these cases there is also going to be a climbing fiber activity around here or, or here for example, there is going to be a climbing fiber activity. Now, after adaptation this is during adaptation after adaptation what you observe is that the movement becomes relatively smooth. So, people have learnt and the activity of the Purkin J cell is similar to the activity before learning similar to that one right this is post adaptation ok. So, this means that the climbing fiber is teaching the mossy fibers or the climbing fiber is teaching the Purkin J cell how to respond to errors right. So, basically it modifies the parallel fiber Purkin J cell synaptic strength to correct for example, multiple movement errors especially in eye and limb movements. During movements with errors climbing fibers react basically by causing selective uh, long term depression. So, it does not happen every time only in cases when there is an error climbing fiber reacts. So, whenever the climbing fiber reacts you know that those parallel fibers and their activity should be responded to less in future. So, parallel fibers that caused this error uh, will not be responded to in future because they cause errors and consecutive repetitions of this multi with successive movements those parallel fibers that convey error that convey signals which could cause movement errors are suppressed their activity is suppressed more and more and movement errors are corrected more and more thus reducing uh, the movement errors also reducing uh, the 
activity of these parallel fibers causing a more correct or a more appropriate simple spike activity. Simple spike activity means activity of parallel fibers. So, more correct or more appropriate activity of parallel fibers is uh, taught by the climbing fibers. By around that time climbing fiber activity itself disappears. So, climbing fiber activity when it accompanies a parallel fiber activity it means that parallel fiber is causing an error we have to reduce the effect of that parallel fibers in future and that is selectively done through multiple iterations and later on the climbing fiber activity disappears, but parallel fiber activity or those parallel fibers are not responded to in future trials right. So, in summary what we have learnt is the crucial role of climbing fibers what is this crucial role? Climbing fibers act as teaching signals to the to the parallel fiber Purkinje cell synapse or they selectively modify the synaptic strength of uh, parallel fibers and Purkinje cells and thus it contributes to motor learning. This is a dominant hypothesis in uh, motor learning. We will continue our discussion on motor learning in the next class. Thank you very much for your attention.